Hi, it's Dr. Witten, and today I want to talk about the power of our word, keeping our word, keeping our promises. It's an interesting subject I've studied uh, for quite a long time. I first started thinking about this after a seminar I took back in 1991. It's such a profound concept. I, I still find it applies uh, in my life, you know, 30 years later. Um, but first, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And so I want to talk about when we say we're going to do something. You see, our word is the most powerful thing that we have. It's kind of like money. It's like currency. But it's only powerful if it's followed by actions. And so what I'm inviting everyone to do is write down what you are agreeing to do the next day. And notice what you promise when you say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow or I'll call you tomorrow at five o'clock. See if you actually do those things. If you write them down, write down all the promises that you, keep, uh, that you make and see if you actually do them. So the idea is that the more that your promises or that the things you say are followed with action, your words become powerful. They become more potent. And if you don't do what you say you're going to do, the words become devalued. They become uh, weaker. And if you think about words, words, words are everything. Uh, when you get married, you stand there and the minister says some words and you say some words and one second you're not married and the next second you're married. It's just a matter of saying words. And the presidents, we elect presidents or any job, uh, we get hired because somebody asks us some questions and then we say some words and they decide whether they want us or not to be president or to be a cashier. So the words that we say and how reliable we are determines how successful we are in our lives. If you actually keep 75% of the promises you make, you will be incredibly successful. So the thing to start off with is make very simple promises. One of the ways people try to get out of it is say, oh, I'm just not going to promise anything. so." I'll never not keep a promise. That's no good either. So the way you strengthen your power and strengthen your effectiveness in life is by making simple promises and then keeping it. And then make slightly harder promises and keeping them. See, the problem is, in any given moment, people are trying to decide whether they're going to listen to their promise or their feelings. And the average person, the majority of people, they do what they feel like doing in any given moment. It's almost like, well, I didn't feel like doing it. So that's somehow an excuse, even when they promise something. So to become a powerful human being requires you to look to your words more than to your feelings. And of course, there's going to be circumstances uh, that come up but see how powerfully you can be your word as opposed to your feelings. And if you can't keep your word, let's say, you know, there's a mudslide or some catastrophe happens, you communicate it and you make another promise. It's not that you're bad or good. Just notice how well you keep your promises. And if you can't keep your promise, communicate that said something came up, uh, and then recommit to another promise. It's not bad or good. You're not a good person or a bad person. You either have a strong word or you have a weak word. Anyway, so I'm inviting you to look at your word and see how powerful is your word. As your word gets stronger and stronger and stronger, pretty soon you can declare things. And you, you might not even know how you're going to fulfill on that promise. But if your word is that strong, you will find a way through creativity, through determination. There's an old story about uh, uh, John F. Kennedy. There was, he would walk home from school or something and he would come to this wall and there was no way to get over the wall. 
like it was too high and there was no real way to get over it. And so what he would do was he would throw his hat over the wall. And what that did was he liked that hat. So he was going to get over that wall because his hat was on the other side and he, <laughs> he didn't want to lose his hat. I don't know if that's a true story, but I thought it was a good example. You create a situation in which you can't squirm your way out of. Uh, you create a situation in which success is the only acceptable outcome. There's a great book that I read long ago called The Four Agreements. Probably many of you have read that book. It's very famous. And the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. And it doesn't just mean keeping your promise. It also means use your words for healing, use your words for prospering, and that's basically all you should use your words for. You shouldn't use your words to harm other people, to be critical, to gossip. So be very careful how you use your words. Use your words consciously and be very aware of how you use your words. Just like you're very aware of how you spend your money, be conscious of how you spend your words. Anyways, hope that helps. Love to hear your comments. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe and share with me the stories uh, that, um, that you have regarding this. Have a great holiday and we'll see you next time.